What's up, my comic con? My name's Cullen, and I collect comics, and it's Wednesday, and so it's new comic book day. We're going to go through both Marvel and DC pulls I've got from my local comic book shop. It's the comic strip. It's on Broadway in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Check them out. Uh, actually, while I was in the shop, someone sold a collection, and I immediately bought a book out of that, so that was cool today. That's always fun, but yeah, let's uh, get started with Batman uh, 130. And, uh, this is, uh, the, uh, uh, Jorge Jimenez cover, and, uh, he also did the interior art, and Chip Zdarsky's a writer for this. And, yeah, it's the, uh, final chapter in the fail-safe arc reaches its brutal and stunning conclusion. Batman has one desperate final option. He will willy walk away from it. The answer will shock you. The early days of Dark Knight and his relationship with Zer and Ra continues. So it's got two two things going with that. Alright. Next we've got that Batman and Joker, the deadly duo. And uh, this is a uh, Mark Silvestri cover. He, Mark Silvestri is also writing this. I've always loved Mark Silvestri. Uh, he was a uh, him and Jim Lee really got me started uh, really l enjoying comic books for the art as a kid, so, yeah. Uh, it's number two also, by the way. Batman has joined forces with his arch nemesis, and things are already off to a rocky start. But time is of the essence as another piece of Commissioner Gordon is delivered to the Gotham City PD. Will Batman be able to work fast enough to save his dear friend or whatever's left of him? Ooh. That's starting to sound kind of brutal on that one. Alright. Next we have Batman Nightwatch. And, uh, this is number four. And, uh, the uh, cover artist for this is, uh, Eric Owen. And, yeah, Eric Owen. And, uh, the uh, interior artist is uh, Marcelo de Caira, and the uh, writer for this is Joseph Torres. Firefly exacts revenge on the people who ruined his movie career and put him in jail by setting buildings on fire across the city. Batman has to figure out who's on Firefly's list and who to protect where he's going to strike next. Oh, and Firefly's list to predict where he's going to strike next. Sorry about that, y'all. All right. Next, we've got Dark Crisis. Number one of this uh, one shot of uh, Warzone. And uh, that Dark Crisis Warzone. And the uh, artist for the cover on this is uh, Raphael uh, Sarmento. And... Uh, Matthew Rosenberg's writing this. Delia's Dawson is writing. Jeremy Adams is writing. Stephanie Williams is writing. And Frank Curry is writing. And then we've got art by uh, George Cambada, Cambon Diaz, uh, Daniel Bayless, uh, Sarah Jacuna, Matt Ryan, and Fernando uh, Passon. Boots on the Ground, View of Dark Crisis, written by Matthew Rosenberg, Delilah S. Denton, Jeremy Adams, uh, Frank Carrier, and Stephen, Stephanie Williams, art by George Cameron Diaz, Daniel Belez, Fernando Pisarian, and Matt Ryan, and Sarah Jacuna. As the Hall of Justice fails to get a new perspective on the various conflicts while the battles across the Dark Crisis rage, with the classic Justice League members gone, see how members of the next generation, such as Red Canary and the Flash family, deal with the chaos in the key chapter of this saga leading into Dark Crisis 7. All right. Next, we've got Gotham City Year One, number three, and uh, 
The uh, cover artist for this is uh, both uh, Bill Hester and Eric Gapster, and also the pencil and inkers for this book is Bill Hester and Eric Gapster, and Tom King's writing it. And this is issue three of Gotham City Year One. Slam Bradley has been one step behind the kidnappers the entire time. Can he turn the tables in time to save the infant heiress to the Wayne fortune? Is this hardened private investigator prepared to deal with the dark and deadly twist that will define Gotham City for generations to come? Alright. Then next we've got the new Joker book. The Joker the Man Who Stopped Laughing. This is issue number three. Uh, Carmine D. Giadonomenko is the, uh, is the cover artist, and uh, the uh, interior art is also by Carmine D. Gian Dano or Gian Domingo, and it says also Francisco Francivella. I love his stuff, by the way. Hopefully, that's not cover art. Hopefully, that's interior with him. I hope so. I love his stuff. Like I said, uh, uh, the Joker is. Oh, and Matthew Rosenberg is writing this. The Joker is dying and needing needs medical help, but where can the most wanted man in the United States get it? And to make matters worse, Jason Todd decides now to finally hunt and kill the clown for the crime. <coughs> so that sounds like fun with super super duper loving some Red Hood on Joker, always. That made me so happy when I first read that. Like I read that right when it came out. I'm just freaking. Jason Todd just gets it, just beats him down. It's so great, it's so great. But I mean, who cares about this case? So we've got uh, Monkey Prince number nine, and uh, still Bernard Chang doing the interior art and the cover art, and uh, Gene Luen Yang is still uh, writing this. Like I said, it's issue nine. Welcome to Metropolis, where crime is at an all-time low thanks to it being under the watch of the eye of Superman, a.k.a. the perfect place for two hench people scientists, a.k.a. the Monkey Prince's parents, to find their next hench people gig at, right? Nope. They're actually here to visit Grandma, a.k.a. Ultra Humanite. Alright, so, more fun with Monkey Prince. I really love this book. Uh, it's great. Like, it's one that I always make sure I pick up as soon as I get to the shop. Next, we've got Poison Ivy, number one. Or not number one, sorry. Poison Ivy, volume one. Number seven. I love this cover, by the way. Shill, baby, shill. It's just great. Uh, G. Willow Wilson's writing this. The cover artist for, uh, this one is Jessica... No, Jessica Fong, I believe. Yes, it is a Jessica Fong cover. And, uh, yeah, uh, oh, uh, Atunga Alian is the, uh, artist for this, and, like, G. Willow Wilson's writing it. Chill, baby, chill. Poison Ivy has finally said, sold out to big fracking. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. With a new mission and a renewed outlook on life, and, uh, Burgeoning <laughs> new sense of purpose. Ivy is back and better than b ever before. A brand new era of Poison Ivy begins. This is going to be great. I already know it. I love this. Like, I mean, I don't know if this is... To me, this, like, you know... This should be a, you know, new classic cover to me. I mean, I doubt it will be, but, man, I love this. Just this whole... This is just awesome. All right, we are moving on to Marvel. And now we've got Damage Control Volume 4, or number 5. And, uh, let's see, the, uh, cover artist for this is, uh, says Patrick Dercher and Brian Reber. 
Uh, the uh, interior artist is Nathan Stockman, and Hans Rodinoff and Adam F. Goldberg are writing this still. This is it. This is Gus's absolute, absolute, <laughs> this is Gus's absolute last, last chance to find a place to fit in at damage control. Unfortunately, the only remaining department that will have him is in the deep storage vault, where he is tasked with cataloging the contents of all the endless rows of crates and containers. Seems like it should be fairly low risk. However, this is Gus we're talking about. And before the day is over, there will be a massive morass of mechanical mayhem perpetrated by machine man just uh, Century 459 Tez One and Sentinels Galore. Hans Rodinoff and Adam of Goldberg continue to churn out hilarious world combination, word combinations, and Nathan Stockman serves up a visual punchline that will delight and entertain you as we conclude Gus's epic journey through damage control. Alright. After damage control, we have Daredevil number six. Uh, and, uh, this, uh, Chip Zdarsky's writing this, uh, the cover for this is, uh, Marco, uh, Cecchietto, and, uh, also, uh, Marco Cecchietto is the, uh, interior artist for this, and, like I said, it's issue number six. And the most shocking issue of Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cecchietto's landmark Daredevil epic yet. Electra finds herself at the center of a new international incident that threatens to put her, Matt Murdock, and everything they hold dear on a collision course with the Avengers, after which things may never be the same. All right. Got a couple more books here, and then we're done. We got Spider-Man number three. And, uh, this has got a Mark Bagley cover, which I actually really, really like. Uh, penciler for this also, Mark Bagley and Dan Slott writing it. And, like I said, issue number three. The end of the Spider-Verse rages on. Spider-Man and Night Spider have to make the, an impossible heist against impossible odds. If you thought the first issue was shocking, think again, because this new issue is going to shake your you to your core all right next we have tiger division number two uh tiger division is got the cover artist by Kreeves Hung Sung Lee and uh, the uh, artist for it also is Chris Hung Sung Lee and the writer for it is Emily Kim and uh, who stole the silog game as Tiger Division gets closer to uncovering the mystery the danger grows while something from Tangolatari's past continues to haunt him can Tay reconcile with his ghost or will his secrets tear the team apart? Alright. So, that's all my books I picked up from the comic strip that were new. Now, to finish it off, what did I get? Uh, what did I pick up from this collection? Check this out. We have a Batman 608 second print. It's a beautiful book. I absolutely love it. I've been wanting it for 22 years now. Ever since it came out. I wasn't able to pick one up when we went to the shop. And, uh, yeah, I love this book. It's awesome. I'm so glad to have it. It's just such an iconic cover to me. I mean, the Night Watch, you know, this is like, uh, just classic Jim Lee. I mean, this is, to me, this is like, you know, like, just that defensive pose and Jim Lee doing it. And it's just, you know, it's just, a super duper classic but uh yeah uh holler at you guys later 
thanks for watching. I'm getting ready to roll the books, and hopefully we'll get some more stuff out this week. All right. See you later.